It is worth summarizing the salient features of the debate about the origins of the Quranic form of Jesus' name. It is not certain that Jesus' original name was Yeshua. Josephus, yes. the evidence he provided for the name. Yes. Let's read from this encyclopedia. Yes. Okay. So this is probably what you read, right? Rather than the encyclopedia article. So okay. There was a Wikipedia article. Is this what you're reading from? No. Nope. Because the, I actually have the I actually have the Brill Encyclopedia. Yeah. So do I. So okay. when, when you read the Brill Encyclopedia, what did yeah. it actually say? So let me read it to you. Okay. okay. From the encyclopedia itself. Okay. Here. Josephus, this is point number three. Yes. Josephus used the Greek name Isus to denote three people mentioned in the Bible whose Hebrew names were not Yeshua. Yes. So now we see already last time. Yes. You have been very selective okay. and very misrepresenting Josephus. Okay. So Josephus used Isus to okay. refer to other people okay. whose name was not Yeshua. No way. Yes. Very clear this is what he's saying. Okay. They're not even, he says, oh, let me continue reading the text. Josephus used the Greek name, Isus, yep. to denote three people mentioned in the Bible whose Hebrew names were not Yeshua, Yehoshua, or Yehoshua. Okay. They were Saul's son, Ishvi, anglicized as Ishvi in the RSV of 1 Samuel 1449. Yep. The Levite, Abishua, mentioned in 1 Chronicles 6, 4, etc. And Ishwa, the son of Asher, anglicized as Ishva in the RSV of Genesis 46, 17. So the Josephus that you used to provide evidence for your support for your argument is actually saying this is not an evidence at all because Josephus used the name Isus referring to other people who were called what? Abishua, Ishvi, Ishwa. When I pronounce this name, yes. Isus, I want to know what the actual name was. Yes. So now he says these names are actually from yes. Ishwi. Yeah. Does it sound like Yeshua? It doesn't need to. Abishua? Does it sound like Yeshua? It doesn't need to. Ishwa? Does it sound like Yeshua? It doesn't. This is what Brill Encyclopedia itself says. Okay. Josephus used the name Isus referring to other people who were not Yeshua, Yehoshua, or Yehoshua. Yes. So Josephus' evidence goes against you. In fact, Josephus consolidates my point where it says, when we have this Greek name, okay. Isus, yeah. is it a translation from Ishvi? Is it a translation from Ishvi or Ishvi or Abishua or Ishwa or Ishva or Yeshua? So can you be certain? Yes. Now, if we now continue the conclusion of Brilliant Encyclopedia, what do you say? By way of conclusion, yes. I'm sure you've read it, right? But you hide, you hid that information last time. Selective quotation. By way of conclusion, it is worth summarizing the salient features of the debate about the origins of the Quranic form of Jesus' name. It is not certain that Jesus' original name was Yeshua. Okay. You want to have a look at it? I know. You know. Okay. And yet, you somehow bring Brilliant Encyclopedia as an evidence, which goes against you. Now, this is my point. So, the evidence that you provided is an evidence against you. Okay. You asked me, name, bring me some of the scholars okay. who support my view. Because what was my view? I am not certain. Which is totally in line with Brilliant Encyclopedia says. So, now you have a big, big problem. But is Isus, is Isus yes. a translation of Ishvi, Ashvi, Abishua, Ishwa, Eshua, Eshua, okay. Eshua, right? All right? You have so, no certainty, just like what I claim. You have no way of determining what it is. First of all, um, yeah, you are correct in that Yesus can be used for other names. Firstly, when we go to the scripture, it tells you the meaning behind the name that God will save. This is the same so it comes from Yeho saves so the Bible itself gives you the meaning of the name that's why when you look at the Greek you know it's not the other names because every name has a different meaning what you're saying does this name sound like that name that's what we call homophones and you're making a, a mistake for example if I say knight with a K and knight with an N they sound dissimilar but they have different meanings now if I go and write that in an English 
uh, test and I say at night time with a key, I will fail my exam. So your point that it should sound similar is actually not a point itself. It just has to translate to the same. So that's why when I originally told you that in the, in the Greek, they did not have the letter shin or the letter Y. So they had to use an iota instead. So now going back to your point of Josephus, just for the cameras, I'll show you as well. That is the rendition in Aramaic, this word here. That's the Aramaic, that word right there. So the funny thing is, Josephus was actually translated into Syriac and Arabic. So now, if you can see here, you can see early church fathers. This is actually the qu Josephus's quote in uh, Syriac. So I'm just showing you again. That is the word that I've highlighted. So we've had it. Translation of what to what? This is in Syriac, which is uh, old format. Translation of what? Of the name that this, this particular this, text is. Yeah, this is a, t a testimony of uh, Flavidium, which is Josephus. It was and translated. And when is this translation from? Which century? This is from. They believe it's as early as the fifth century. So now he, Mansur will say, well, how do we know? It's very unlikely that they would have translated it into another language without actually understanding what the translation was. We also, we also have the Arabic text, which again, I've highlighted the word. Which is, this was in the, uh, the 10th century. 10th century? Yes. So you have 1,000 years later, right? That's okay. fine. Just so you can see the evidence, because this is the same text of Josephus. That's the word Yeshua. Now, so a translation from 500 years later and a translation okay. you know, 1,000 years later now, is an evidence. Now, we have multiple sources confirming the same thing, pretty much. You didn't, maybe you might have one or two disagreements, as uh, Mansour might say. Now, I want you to look at this person, because in uh, biblical literature, you obviously have the Greek, and you have the Peshitta. The Peshitta is in Syriac, which is Middle Aramaic. So it's very close to what Jesus would have spoken. It's season. So actually, before I spoke to Mansour, I want everyone just to see this. His name is Sebastian Brock. He's a scholar at Oxford University. Anyone can go and uh, Google, Google his name. It says Sebastian Paul Brock, FBA, is generally acknowledged as the foremost academic in the field of Syriac today. I actually emailed him about this. Here's my email. You can see the email too. And I will read what he says, because I asked him where did the name come from? He said, the Syriac forms of the name have nothing directly to do with the Greek, Jesus, but will have come from early Syriac speaking Christians by the way of Jewish Aramaic. So presumably reached the old Syriac and Peshitta gospels by oral tradition. The name will have been very familiar long before anyone thought of translating the Greek Gospels into Syriac. Since vocalization signs were not introduced at all about the 7th or 8th century, there is no way of knowing about how the consonant Y-S-H-W, which is the, the consonants we have been telling you about, were pronounced by early Syriac, Christi Syriac speaking Christians. But the time of the vocalization, the Eastern and Western Syriac traditions of pronunciation had diverged so one had Isho and the other had uh, Yeshua this is the one of the foremost scholars on Syriac language if Mansour wants to bring me a counter uh, uh, scholar who can then disprove and say what his alternate name would have been I will be happy to discuss that evidence but we have confirmation from an Oxford scholar one of the most leading uh, scholars he said the name did not come from the Greek because the Peshitta tried to claim source primacy. They say they got it from Jesus directly. But scholars have noticed that there are certain phrases in the Peshitta that would have only come from the, direct, um, from the Greek. So most scholars will agree that the Peshitta came from the Greek. But he's confirmed the name didn't even come from the Greek. It's come through oral tradition. So Let you can respond yes. to this. Instead of giving me evidence, what okay. you've given me again, what? Look. A work that has been translated 500 years later when already Christianity have accepted by their traditions that name is this Yeshua. Or 1000 years later in an Arabic translation this name is Yeshua. These are already what we call popular belief within the people who are translating. Your belief 
which is based on your evidence, but your evidence bases what? All guesswork and assumptions. So I am consistently saying these scholars are with me. You cannot be certain because there's no certainty about what this original name is, as clearly encyclopedia of the Quran by the Brill publishers are clearly saying. And they say possibility exists that it could be uh, Isa or so on and so forth. So the point is, I think it's established beyond a shadow of doubt by using the evidence that you tried to support, which goes against you that yes, the name about Isa is not Jesus, Latinized, because that's not what his mom called him. It's not even Jesus, because it's a Greek translation. What was the name given by his mom? You don't know. Mansour has made many fallacies in his argumentation. The first, the first of all, he said that if there's no manuscripts, therefore it's unreliable. But when we go to Islamic literature, especially the Hadith, we cannot find anything written. But they will use an argumentation of chains of narration. But then, by Mansour's own standard, we should reject this and only accept manuscripts, the earliest manuscripts. Funny, even I'm going to go on a tangent, the earliest manuscripts of Muhammad do not even say that he performed any miracles. They describe him as a normal man. It's only the later traditions that then associate miraculous wonders with him. So by Ma uh, Mansour's argumentation, we should reject all later manuscripts from Hadith that say he did miraculous things and only accept the earliest stuff like Ibn Ishaq. Now, going on to his point about the name uh, Yisu, we have the Septuagint, which translated, which were translated for, from Jews to Jews. The Jewish scholars translated it into Greek because Greek was the lingua franca. Man Man Mansour's argumentation, in Mansour's argumentation, none of the people at the time knew what the name translated as. They're all ignorant. We have all the over 50 Gnostic Gospels. They're all ignorant, according to Mansour, who were close to the time. We have the Josephus translated into other languages. They, for, for, from their ignorance as well, they've mistranslated his name. We, he's now rejecting one of the foremost scholars of Syriac language and the Peshitta. These people do not do PhDs in nothing. They go and do their research. They don't make an opinion. That's what the false assertion Mansour is making. This is the foremost scholar who has done, written numerous papers on the Peshitta. He knows about the traditions. If Mansour wants to bring me an alternative name for Yeshua, we will discuss it because the original point I said to him is where did the name Isa come from? Yeah. So if he can provide me an alternative name from the uh, Greek, uh, from the um, Hebrew, which translates into the Arabic, then we can discuss it. But at the moment, he's just given me straw man and red herrons. Okay, so so we've heard, he, heard he, we have now no, seen no, we've heard. that I've given all my evidence. We have the Talmud, we have the Bible, we have all the Gnostic Gospels, we have uh, most of the uh, early so church guess, fathers, so guess we have the Peshitta, we have oral tradition. What you've asked for, I provided, which okay. refutes you completely. There's no point in any further discussion about going back again, old Talmud and this and this. So, nice talking to you, paper boy. Okay. Maybe one day you'll as, be known as with your real name. As we can see, he was unable to provide me an alternative name. He can only, this is what we call, <laughs> what he's doing is called an attack, uh, a fallacy of okay, ignorance. So because if and a fallacy of white. ignorance yeah, yeah. is, for example, if I say the moon is made of cheese in the center, yeah, yeah. no one can disprove it. It doesn't mean my point is right. This is why we have a fallacy called the argument from ignorance. Because this is what Mansour is making. That he does not know, he cannot provide any evidence to provide an alternative name for Isa. I've provided scholarship, true scholarship, one of the foremost scholars of the Peshitta who's confirmed the tradition of the name but yet when it comes to hadith they can not they can reject manuscripts and say we can rely on it on oral tradition but it seems like everyone else's oral tradition is invalid unless it suits his argument so again i will ask any muslim to show me where did the name isa come from or the hebrew equivalent mansour in his confidence said that he can defeat wrap this subject over in 15 minutes but yeah i've conclusively made my point and destroyed his argumentation that uh, you know, it could have been anything other than Yeshua. I just want to ask again, what, what, is, the, what okay. is the goal at the end of Etymologically, this? you can translate Underline it back into Hebrew. Underlying this is the Quran gets it wrong, right? right. Yes. That is the assumption. He says yes. But we know that your evidence is based on zilch.